Edutech Guys Radio, radio radio.edutechguys.com. The opinions expressed on this site is programmed for those whose participants are not intended to and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of any specific educational entity, sponsor, company, state, or government agency. Hello and welcome to Edutech Guys Radio, brought to you by Southwest Arkansas Education Cooperative and Hope Public Schools, both in Hope, Arkansas. We want to give a special shout out to CDWG for their sponsorship through some of the equipment that we use here on the show. How you doing? I am David Henderson. And I'm Jeff Madlock. All right. Hope you guys are doing great out there. We uh, we got a really cool show for you today. Yes, we do. Pretty excited. SunGuard is, uh, but we have a uh, solution specialist from SunGuard on the show today, and uh, we'll let him introduce himself here in a bit. Yeah, man. It's going to be um, cool. I'm pretty excited about it. And it, you know, hey, the best part about right now is summer's winding down. Can you uh, believe that? I mean, it's all, I, we're, we're three weeks away from the beginning of school. That is crazy. Well, what's four weeks? Well, you know. well, it depends on where you are and what's happening, but you know, yeah, it's still, it's, it's really weird to think that the middle of July is when, you know, the summer's winding down, you know, it, I don't know. It just seems like, it just seems like summer finally got here. And but it's, it's the it's point in, in our department where we try to get all the tech work we should have done the first few months. My guys, we can't hang forty-five access points in two days. That's right. Yes, you can. That's right. Instead of playing, that's right. Instead of playing Overwatch, you guys should have yeah. been hanging stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Who's going to watch that Quake tournament now? That, you know, yeah. Great. There you go. Just, you, you guys and your Pokemon Go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to talk about. That. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, oh my god! or whatever the heck whatever, those things yeah, are. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> no, hey, listen. Jigglypoo. <laughs> catch us online. At, <laughs> I don't know. I think that's one of the names. I don't know. My kids play it. I don't, I don't, know. I don't think that's Is it. That <laughs> oh my gosh. No, Jigglypoo. There's a medicine for that. I, I could have swore I saw one of those last night on C-SPAN at the Republican National Convention bouncing across the floor. Oh, so, oh, anyway. <laughs> anyway. So here's what we got. Um, catch us online, www.edutechguys.com. You can drop down the bottom of the page and find our contact form there. Fill it out. Tell us what you think, what's going down, what's happening. Tell us we have terrible jokes. You can also catch us on, anywhere on the web. Just go to Google, type in Edutech Guys. I promise you we'll probably be the first thing to uh, to pop up. You can catch us at Twitter. It's twitter.com slash edutechguys. Facebook.com slash edutechguys. Google.com slash plus sign Edutech guys. That's at the Google Plus site, Google Hangout. Uh, we're also on Instagram. If you want to look us up on Instagram, we post some of our pictures out there. I don't think, Dave, you didn't even know that, did you? No, I. that's new. We, to we me. throw all our. You say it every week, and it's still new to me. I'm... You miss it. So we're not on Pinterest. I don't I don't get the Pinterest thing. I can't. I, I don't. I, 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 I can't. I can't get into that. It's just one I more just... thing I can't do. So, <laughs> otherwise, socially, we're pretty socially out there. We're kind of hanging with the show and, and doing I stuff. What, what, I don't know what we would pin. I don't know. I have no idea. Ah, <laughs> uh, great. Hey, listen. Uh, let's. Uh, you know, I, I did have to bring up something else while we're thinking about it, since it's it's about time uh, to start school. You are getting ready to do a PD out there. Professional development is yeah. on every on the forefront of everyone's mind. Um, if you'd like us to drop by and do some PD for us, for you, contact us. Just go to the website. You can fill out the form mm-hmm. for there. Or you can write either Jeff at or David at edutechguys.com. Uh, we have some stuff on the website. We'd love to come in and uh, talk to your folks about Google Classroom, uh, Google Docs, anything with Google Apps for Education. We can show you how we do the podcast and how you can build the podcast for your classroom, yeah. for your school, um, the equipment you might need, how to set it up. Uh, also, video podcasts, if you want to do it. It's just one more element. Like we always say, we don't have faces for video. We have faces for radio. That's right. But uh, the kids love that kind of stuff, and um, it really builds a, a good social following amongst your community and your school system. So yeah. if you're doing that professional development, let us know. Uh, we'd love to come by your school anywhere. Drop in and do that. Also, we'll give a, another shout-out to the Southwest Arkansas Educational Cooperative, uh, who does professional development like 720 Four, four, 24, seven. <laughs> 24 I mean, seven. It feels like twenty four seven. Every time I come in here, there's something going on in the yeah, inner room yeah. somewhere. Yeah, big times. Yeah. Uh, well, in fact, I'm I'm even doing I'm doing a, a well I'm doing a training tomorrow. Uh, it's it's a select group of folks for the scheduling program that we use, um, and and a lot of our area schools also use um, for scheduling events that type of thing. And then in August, um, some of you may remember. Let me back up a little bit. Some of you may remember back in June, Jeff and I had talked about we were doing a podcasting workshop um, 
it was around the middle of June and a big storm came in and flooded out the place. And so all that got canceled. Well, that's been rescheduled now. And so August 3rd, yeah, Jeff, Jeff's like, it has? <laughs> yes, it got rescheduled as of today. Oh, sweet. Uh, so on August 3rd, um, we that that's going to be a, a training offered here at the co-op. You can go to www.swaec.org and click on professional development and then hit the August link. And if you look at August 3rd, there's a couple of workshops there that uh, I'll be doing. Um, so feel free to check those out. And hey, if you happen to be in Hope, Arkansas, or feel like traveling out here, by all means, man, sign up, come on out, and I'll be happy to meet you. That'd be cool. By all means. Hey, listen, that workshop on August 3rd, we will go live during that workshop. We like to do our workshops, uh, podcasting workshops. If not the whole thing, at least part of it will be live. So you can kind of keep check in and see what's going down and find out what's happening. So it's a lot of yeah. fun to do those. Uh, a lot of good stuff shared there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We yeah. always have a good time. Well, and, and the other cool thing about the, the workshops that we do, any of the workshops that we do that involve podcasting, uh, we do a portion of that and sometimes the entire thing, but certainly a portion of it is actually done as a live podcast. So we're not just going up there and standing in front of your folks and saying, this is how thou shalt podcast. We're doing it while we're showing it. So, you know, it's the whole modeling thing and um, very cool. So as Jeff had mentioned, um, if you're looking for some PD, hit us up. We uh, love to come out wherever you happen to be. We'll find a way to you and uh, come out and, and show your folks how to do some podcasting and Depending on how long you keep us there, uh, we can actually have them start podcasting for your school district or individual classrooms or what have you. It'd be very cool. You know, one of the fun parts of this show is, uh, I, I, what are we on? We're season two, episode six. six. Holy smoke. We've done like 50-something episodes. Yeah, man. The real fun part of this show is finding guests. And uh, David and I always kind of shoot big. We just... Wait, wait, what are they going to say? No? Okay. Yeah, well, I, you know, exactly. I hear that all the time. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. Take that for what you want. The, uh, but, you know, I, we always, it, to me, this is when, uh, we, when we get someone like today, you know, we reached out to SunGuard and said, hey, you guys want to be on the show? And, you know, not only we get somebody on the show, we get, you know, a solution specialist, one, one you know, somebody that really tell us all about products. Right. And here in Arkansas, we use eSchool Plus. Right. Well, and, and e-finance plus. And e-finance plus. I mean, mm -hmm. it is statewide, and it's it's what our teachers use, and what I mean, what every school district uses. Right. Exactly. So this is a really big one for us, and um, we're pretty excited uh, about having our guest today. We're going to let him introduce himself and tell us tell us who he is and uh, what he does and all that kind of good stuff. Hey, welcome. Hey, everybody. How y'all doing? Great. Awesome. Well, my name is Justin McKean, and I'm a solutions specialist with SunGuard K12. And I was uh, I spent about a decade in the classroom, so I've got a lot of experience. I, I had a lot to do with personalized learning, digital classrooms, standards-based grading. Uh, I would love the Google Classroom, so it's awesome to hear that, that Jeff and David are big in that as well. And I've been with SunGuard for about two years. Uh, my focus is the student products, so I am I'm very in tune with eSchool Plus uh, our, and our sister products, IEP Plus and Performance Plus. Cool. That's yeah. awesome. That's that is a, that's very a, cool. A lot of products. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, it, it definitely can tax the brain, right? It's a lot, <laughs> lot going on. You know, but it's got to be fun coming from education and, and getting to still, you know, be a big part of education. I bet that's a great job. It is. It's, you know, when I, when I was younger, I always wanted to be a teacher, but I always liked that coaching atmosphere. So when I get up in front of a group of people to give a demonstration, it's extremely exciting because I'm, I'm talking and interacting with people, which is something I love, but I still can be, like you said, a part of the education world, which is, is a big, big thing for me. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, in, uh, what is your biggest seller, your biggest product um, in uh, K-12 education? So our biggest product is eSchool Plus, which is our student information system side. Uh, we've got over 8 million students in the country that use eSchool Plus that's wow. over 500,000 teachers, and it's actually one out of six students in the country are affected by eSchool Plus. Uh, on the opposite side of that, as you all know, down there at Arkansas, another big product for us is eFinance Plus, mm -hmm. which runs the financial side of the house. Uh, not my specialty, um, but those are our two big ones. Um, coupled with those, we also have IEP Plus, which is our special education software. And our fourth product is Performance Plus, which is curriculum and assessment software. And with those four, the major benefit that SunGuard brings is we call it Plus 360, 
we actually have four standalone products that integrate and work seamlessly with each other. So that's the big thing that we're excited about. And I know that you all experienced that down there a little bit, but hey, maybe we should talk about special education and performance plus uh, once we get off the phone, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get a little pitch in there, right? There you uh, that's go. right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> However, uh, it, it, given your experience with the state of Arkansas, you know that that is way above our pay grade for that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> that's way above our pay grade. We'll talk about it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and we'll talk about that, too. <laughs> hey, funny, I just got a note here to meet. <laughs> Better be in this office in the morning. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, one of my great, it's really interesting. Um, you know, we started using eSchool Plus and the Home Access Center has tremendously helped us in a whole lot of areas. Uh, you know, and that was a, that was our first, we had used a, a product called a, a Pinnacle, maybe it was, the Q's bag. Anyway. Probably. Yeah, it was, you know, all the schools in the state of Arkansas were using whatever they used. And that was a problem. You know, it was a huge problem. So coming under one big umbrella really helped us out tremendously. And I know you guys are making leaps and bounds uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, family and, and, and apps to use to really get the communication out there and help families keep up with what's happening with their students. Absolutely. Um, you know, with Home Access Center, it's obviously a great way to connect parents and the community to the school, which is crucial uh, to student success and student growth. We also uh, recently have rolled out a, about a year ago now our family app. Mm -hmm. which is home access center on your mobile device. So think about that for a second. When you talk about being future ready and getting parents in the community involved, one out of 80% of people today use the internet on their phones. Yeah, And right. there are statistics out there that over 50% of them shop online, they use their phones. Right. Everything comes back to that mobile device. So now we're providing that home access center feel for those of you that are familiar. If you're not familiar, home access center is just our parent and student portal where they log in to see grades on tests, uh, their attendance information and things along those lines. We're putting that on a mobile device now, which really, really opens the door to that parent community involvement. I love in a demo when you talk about the parent teacher conference, right guys, how that's like one of the two best days of the year, right? You bring a parent in and they say, I've never logged into home access center. How's it work? Well, right. Now you just, hey, can you get your phone out? And in 30 seconds, they've logged in and they're looking. So the power there, the proof's in the pudding, right? You can just see it right there in front of them. Yeah, that, that works so well because, you know, using Google, especially Google Classroom and, you know, and the way you can tie in all of that with student and parental, you know, involvement with their students directly and they're sitting there, you know, this is the dreaded me. I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I'm not a student now because it would be, you know, me sitting, my parents standing in my room, me sitting on the end of the bed and they're looking at, well, you had this work due in Google classroom and I've got the app right here and we're looking at your grades and we're looking at everything right now. I would have been a dead man. You know? <laughs> Isn't that the truth? I actually had, I actually did an implementation with a district in Pennsylvania and a student looked at me while I'm talking to him and his parent and was just like, what are you doing to me, man? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, that's the way it is. That's right. I'm, I'm up in your game. That's what I'm doing, that's man. Right. You know, but you, you know, know every United States is when can I get it? I need it now. So we're trying to meet that, meet that desire, meet that need. Well, so one of the things that you, mentioned, you know, as parents are able to not just check grades, but they can also check attendance. So I'm curious as to, um, how do I, how do I want to say this? I mean, it just seems to me that along with kind of what you guys were just saying here you know, with Jeff, you know, the, the parents saying in the end of the bed, yeah, this says you didn't go to school yesterday or, you know, whatever. So, you know, to me, that's, that, that would lend itself to at least theoretically helping to curb absenteeism. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. And how big of a, a problem is that in the United States today? I, I just read an article and, and I put it out on my blog for other people to read that it stated 13 percent of the students in 2013 missed 15 or more days of school. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's it's crazy. I mean, it, it, it puts a pit in my stomach when I say it out loud because you just that's not good, obviously. Right? right. Right. And so with the attendance side of the app, it's really cool because the parent can customize their notifications. So they can say they want real time notification when their students marked absent or even if they're tardy. Right. You can't be late to class anymore for those high school kids because the right. parents can sign up for those. So when addressing absenteeism, you know, it's just a big deal and it needs to be handled. I call it an educational epi epidemic. 
because it's just something that people don't really talk about. It's kind of like that thing in the closet where everyone's worried about student growth and achievement and they're not worried about if the kids are coming. Well, what's the number one key to students learning? It's them being there, right? Right, so, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, and then, you know, in, in addition to the fact that a student not being there affects the student, it affects the overall school operating environment, you know, I, and I realize, you know, this is not necessarily going to uh, to to rub feathers in the right direction with some folks that are listening, but, you know, it's, it is the truth of it all. When students are absent, schools do not get the money for that student. So, you know, how much the district is able to get to spend on things like teacher salaries, like technology, you know, like other investments, that's all based on that, you know, the, the daily attendance of those students. So if they're not there, that's directly affecting what's going on in the school district. So it, it's all, it's all interconnected. It can all absolutely snowball out of control if that's not, hand, excuse me, not handled. Um, so, you know, I, I think that's a, to me anyway, I think it's a, a, a potentially cool way to um, sort of get a handle on that. Now I'm also a devil's advocate. So the next part of that would be, so how much does that contribute to the whole helicopter parent thing? You know, <laughs> absolutely. Right. It gives them another tool, right. To, to swarm and swamp their kids. But, you know, we, I think we just flipped the, the, the coin back the other side, you know, the state of Georgia, right down there next to you all has put a lot of work lately into developing a truancy program that actually holds the parents accountable. Mm. Right. So with eSchool plus using the app, obviously we support that. And there's also programs we can run right within the software that are going to help districts track students' absences. So they'll be alerted if they miss three days, five days. I think uh, Georgia uses a five-day, eight-day, and then a 10-day sampling so that they're on those parents constantly sending sure. up letters, setting up court dates. You know, I, I was a part of that as a dean of students in a district in Pennsylvania, and that's just a, it's a sad state of affairs when you're talking to a parent about could you please get your son or daughter up at seven and put them on the bus? Right. right. Everyone's got a story. Right. And, and I think that with those tools that we're going to provide, we hopefully can really try to minimize those absentees. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So are there any other collaboration tools, you know, in teacher access center, you know, to, to help, you know, alleviate some of these problems and, you know, help the teachers out to get this. So it doesn't have to be an administration problem all the time. Absolutely. You know, right within Teacher Access Center, a teacher is going to obviously see and be able to track students' attendance. So they can connect directly from home using, uh, we call it the student drawer. It's a filing cabinet of information. You guys are probably familiar with it, where it has all the parent contact information. So a teacher can quickly drop an email. They can even publish a note just to themselves. You know, hey, this is Justin's fifth missed day of school, and they can publish that note to a parent. Wow. So that they can get that in home access center. So just some, you know, really subtle things that can be taken care of but in education, right? It all comes down to data and recording information. So your administrators can record it, your teachers can record it. And both of those stakeholders then have the ability to share that information with parents. That's really cool. Yeah, I guess now, especially since you guys have moved into the realm with it working on just any device, you know, HTML5 has made a big deal. So, Absolutely. You know, and that's, that's what works with teachers. Uh, you know how teachers are. You, you know you've been in education. If they, <laughs> if they use it once or twice and it doesn't do exactly what they want, them to, want it to do, they'll be the first to drop it or put it to the side. But it sounds like you guys have been on the cutting edge of trying to keep that in their hands. So pretty much now, with what you've done in the 4.0 of the four point update is uh yeah it's going to work on anything right absolutely jeff so that that's what that does with that html5 responsive design we are browser agnostic and you can do anything with an eschool plus on a tablet that you do on the computer and so that goes to your teachers as you just mentioned that isn't that the truth though right there's so much technology out there today that if they try it a couple times it doesn't work they're going to go somewhere else and they're going to find it right, right. because they're always something new and upcoming and we do provide that mobile access to your teachers now your administrators and your parents so all stakeholders can be helicopter administrators teachers. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> and parents right we already knew we had helicopter parents who knew we had helicopter teachers and administrators that's right so it's, yeah it's a really nice thing to have you know Hill hilliard city schools in ohio uh implemented us a few years ago and they really appreciate that parent teacher connection and they've stated that you know 
they've embraced uh, an empowerment and inspirement with their with their parents and students. And with this connection we've been talking about for the last several minutes, they've seen that growth with the community, and then it's shown in student growth. So really big things are happening. That's yeah, awesome. That is very very. You know, cool. and it's funny you hit on that, and it's it's good to know that. I would I would like to be a fly on the wall in the SunGuard meetings when they're talking about, you know, not necessarily the application of the program, but how it's going to work in the community for the teachers, for the parents, because that's that's a really big deal. We've all learned, SunGuard definitely has learned that, that the more the parents use that note or use that publishing a note or sending an email to a parent and getting information that is relevant and timely, then the parents are going to use the app. And it's going to be a beautiful symbiotic relationship across the board. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There there are studies out there that say, and I think it's a stretch, but there are studies out there that say students with that community involvement, their GPA can grow a whole point. So, I mean, just think about turning a C student into a B student. That's a big deal, you know, especially, obviously, you turn a D to a C and F to a D. But even just that mediocre kid who just kind of floats through, making them a B student might be what they need to put them over the top. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's, That's very exactly cool. right. I tell you what, we're going to drop out to a quick little music break here, catch our sea legs, and when we come back, I want to talk about moving a little further down the road, like some of the stuff you guys have with notifications, uh, dashboards, integration with IBM Cognos, things like that. Great. That sound good? Hey, listen, uh, you're listening to EduTech Guys, coming to you live from the Southwest Arkansas Educational Co-op. We're going to play one of our favorite guys here. We play him all the time. David's cousin. I was going to say, let me guess, it's Nixie. We're we'll playing a little Nixie. Uh, this is uh, Living on the Outside. Nice. You're listening to the EduTech Guys. Hey, you're listening to EduTech Guys Radio, radio radio.edutechguys.com. Stay tuned. We've got more uh, talk with Justin McKean from SunGuard K-12 coming up.
Oh, yeah. That is Nick C. here on Edutech Guys Radio, living on the outside. You can check him out, N-I-K-S-E-A dot com, and you can uh, get his music there. He, he put out his uh, debut album uh, a little earlier this year, so uh, I'm really proud of him. I really am. He's, he's been working hard and has a great sound, man. So, yeah, good music. Very cool. Yeah. Hey, we took a little break there. Uh, we're back with Justin um, from SunGuard K-12. Really excited to have him on the show. This has been a great. You're you're great at this, by the way. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> so it's always fun to talk to uh, people that are really passionate about education because yeah. it's it's one of our favorite things too, or we wouldn't be doing this. Um, listen, we 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 were just talking about all the parent community involvement that SunGuard has built into their apps, to their their family and admin apps, and you know the all the way they've changed Home Access Center and the stuff that you can do there. So let's get into the back, the uh, the real nuts and bolts just a little bit, just for those tech people that might be listening, and want to know, okay, what else is out there, you know, for us? How does it integrate? You know, what's it use? And for those that aren't in Arkansas, that might don't maybe they don't use eSchool Plus. You know, what's its background? Well, we know what its background is, but I'm gonna let you take the floor for just a second, kind of give us a brief overview of that. Sure, sure. So as we talked about a little bit in the last segment. Uh, we've got that HTML5 responsive design built. So it is that browser agnostic, and then it works on your on your devices. Um, we are SQL background as well. So that database, that setup obviously is set for the future. So when you've got that SQL setup, you know that we're going to be there for you in the next 10, 15 years, because that's where technology is headed. And we've been on that platform now for several years. It's not like we built it out in the last year or two, or we're currently making a transition from where we're at now to SQL. We've been there, we're established, so we're secure in that aspect. When we talk about integration, you know that, that's a hot topic in education today because everyone wants the best of the best. So when you look at other vendors that are out there, some vendors offer the complete show, right? From A to Z, whether it's a transportation piece or a, uh, maybe a meal piece, right? But with okay. SunGuard, you know, we offer our core products that we talked about before. Again, those are eSchool Plus, IEP Plus, Performance Plus, and eFinance Plus. Mm -hmm. The power there is that they all operate on their own. So a district could use Performance Plus only, and it would integrate with whatever student information system they're using. Sure. We bring those together in Plus 360. So that allows four items that can operate and stand on their own to work together. And, you know, there are a lot of districts that have bought into that idea um, of working with and using the plus 360 idea. We've got several up in Pennsylvania, like Upper Dublin uh, School District. We even have some that are stretching into the Texas area that are starting to branch out and figure out those. Outside of Arkansas, we have Delaware, the DOE up there. They use every product that we offer as well. So those are some areas, if you're curious about us, you know, contact the district in those areas to see how they use it, because that integration is huge. But you might be sitting there thinking, well, Justin, I'm, maybe I'm only interested in eSchool Plus, so how does integration work? Right. Well, I'm happy to announce that SunGuard is taking some major leaps, and you know, I'll talk thought leadership probably a lot in the next segment, and we are developing currently an API and something that we call an integration engine. The API will integrate in real time, but the integration engine is a whole new ballgame. Are you guys familiar with integration engines? A little bit. Um, yeah, Give a, go ahead and give us your de you guys' definition of it so we understand how it works with SunGuard's product. Absolutely. So we're in the, the process of building it. So I guess the best way is to explain it is using the medical field. How many of you out there have had a family member that has been diagnosed with cancer? Mm, okay. Right? A lot of us have. And it's a very serious thing. But while they're in the hospital, you know, maybe exploring kidney cancer, what are the odds that something else is going to happen and they're going to be transferred to a different place within the hospital? It's pretty high. Right. So then you start to think, well, how do my records get from the cancer treatment facility over to the heart facility? Well, hospitals around the country use integration engines. Mm -hmm. They allow hospitals to have 10, 20, 30 different systems operating in the same building, but data it magically appears in different places because it's seamlessly integrated between all of these different platforms. That's what we're working on building at SunGuard. It will be the only integration engine in the market space today and talk about integration, right? So you can use the best of breed in any software product that you want, integrate it with our integration engine and it's going to work. 
oh, with nice. SunGuard K12. That, yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. 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 So we're we're super excited about that development. The API is almost finished. It's going to be wrapping up here in the fall, which is that same idea as an integration engine. There's just a little bit of setup, and then mm-hmm. that works and flows seamlessly. The power of the integration engine is that it does the setup and conversions for you. So that's a little bit of a difference, but both are extremely exciting when you talk about integration. We well, you know talking about that integration engine. One of the things we wanted to do here last year, uh, we weren't able to with the version of eSchool Plus that we're running in the states, but it was uh, we used a, a call company called One Call Now, which you guys work with directly, and we were very interested in the fact that they were going to build the, you know our API, our plugin, that yep. so that when a teacher in our classroom, if Jeff is absent, the moment he's clicked absent, you know if we wanted it to work that way, then in real time. My parents get a phone call and say, Jeff's not in fourth period math class. <laughs> um, you know, we, we were looking forward to that. It didn't happen for us. It wasn't by any means eSchool, uh, SunGuard's fault at all. It was just some things that happened here. But, you know, that's that integration that's going to change the face of education. That's, that, that's the integration of how many other products can I use? I'm going to use the call. What, we don't care what call center product you're using. We're going to integrate with it, and we're going to drop the information in real time to this, to this piece. That, that's beautiful. That's really yeah, yeah. It, it is. Yeah. It's, it's real. It will change the game for us, you know. And, w- and as you just mentioned, Jeff, with the API, the one big hiccup with the API is that that third-party product's got to choose yeah. to build that plugin. With the integration engine, it's going to break some of that down a little bit and make it even easier. So that's kind of why I think we're leaning in both areas because, hey, you know, we want again to provide flexibility to the districts to make decisions on how they want to operate. Uh, and how their policies want to operate. Yeah, we know. Well, we, oh, go ahead, David. Sorry. Oh, well, I was just going to say, you know, okay, since we're talking integration engines and APIs, um, at, at least in in my brain, when I think of when I think of the two, and especially if I think it in terms of uh, the the API side of that, at least in my experience, the API tends to offer a little more flexibility than an actual you know engine that's kind of designed to make the pieces work. With an API, as long as I know what's involved with the API, I can pretty much make it do what I want it to do um, without, without. I mean, yeah, it's going to, it's some work, obviously, to make it happen. But when it's all said and done, I can make the connections I need to make um, that might not necessarily be offered in a package type environment, such as, you know, that integration piece. Is, am, I, am I going down the right road in terms of where, SunGuard sees the difference between the two? Uh, yeah, pretty close, David. They, you know, they do have that ability to customize the pieces. With the engine, the idea is still similar to the API, though. You can still pick and decide which pieces are going to integrate. Mm-hmm. The power of the engine is that it runs everything for you with that third-party product. Okay. So with the API, the third party, again, has to build a piece to connect. With right. the engine, it can connect them on their own. So it, it, it takes a step out. Uh, you know, reaching out to one call now and saying, Hey, you know, would you like to build an API for something? They're like, no, thank you. Right. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'll call you in a week. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With the integration engine though, it makes that process a little simpler, hoping to get a little bit more buy-in from those third party products. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, and, it's, yeah. and it's, so, you know, it's not just about absenteeism. Now, I mean, we're data driven. I mean, Oh yeah. No, in that's, education, yeah, I was talking about anything. And, sure. know, that's where we are. And you know, that's the, that's a hot topic. Yep. But with a thing like the integration engine where you're <laughs> we're going to integrate, I mean, to get this data in real time mm-hmm. to administrators, to school improvement specialists, to special ed teachers, to, you know, all of the areas that we now have availability in education and to start getting this data in real time to them, man. Oh, yeah. You're talking yeah. about, you know, that's that's solving problems. That's what it Amen, is. Amen, right? Yeah. yeah. And that, that is the truth. You know, and did you know down there in Arkansas? So I mentioned, I name dropped Delaware, right? So we have statewide in Arkansas and statewide in Delaware. Yeah. Did you know that those two states, they were the first two states to actually reach um, data quality to satisfy the requirements of the data quality campaign? So the data quality campaign was a, a national campaign that was put together to increase the reliability, efficiency, and, you know, access to data throughout districts across the country. Well, Arkansas and Delaware were the first two states to actually achieve a recognition ranking within that campaign. Both of those use eSchool Plus products. Both of those use SunGuard products. And a lot of that comes from, again, that Plus 360, that integration piece that we offer, because how important is data, right? It is, 
you know, I, I just posted something again on my blog recently and I, you know, I'm sorry to mention myself again, but data is useless, right? right. It is absolutely useless <laughs> unless you have the tools. That's the key. To get it out the way you want it. Yep, and, exactly. And that's a big, big deal. And that's how we, you know, we talk about IBM's Cognos, which I know we're going to go there in a little bit that allows you to customize that information. We have a district um, in Pennsylvania, their uh, Rose Tree Media, it's a school district. They actually boast that they have 90 to 95% proficiency with their students because they've taken some of our products, eSchool Plus, Performance Plus, they've married them together, and they're getting the data that they need to target lessons based on weaknesses. Yeah. So that's a big deal, right? Yes, absolutely. Well, and I, and I think, really, I think that's a perfect uh, lead-in for the piece that you're talking about, the integration of SunGuard with the Cogno side. I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head. Data by itself is just that. I mean, it's just data. It doesn't matter. It's just the facts, figures, whatever. There's nothing to it until you find a way to make it mean something. And in Arkansas, you know, we use Cognos as the reporting engine, as the you know data manipulator, if you will. Um, and so I think, and that's I think that's one of the reasons why we really wanted to bring that up as well, um, because it's something we're using here. And I know we have an audience that is much broader than Arkansas, but um, a lot of our audience, uh, at least I hope, <laughs> are using, uh, you know, e-finance, e-student plus, those types of things. And if they're not already integrating it with Cognos, then perhaps um, this conversation may help them understand why they might want to integrate it with something like Cognos. So I'm going to let you pick that ball up and run with it. Yeah, absolutely, David. You know, and you mentioned the ADE there down there in Arkansas. They do use Cognos. And right. I was checking out their website before we got on. And, you know, they boast that they have high quality, complete and uh, timely data, which allows them to provide schools like you and districts in Arkansas with the information they need to make decisions as the school year comes. So like we just talked about, you know, this is PD season, right? Heck with wedding season. Right. Wedding season, that's <laughs> over. It's professional development season. And, yes. And yes. You, if Arkansas, the ADE can provide the districts, their area of weaknesses using Cognos, then just think of the fuel that it gives the administrator when they're standing in front of their teachers. Hey, all uh, we're going to focus on literacy this year. Well, 50% of the eyes just rolled. Someone right. fell asleep. Someone's trying to use the restroom, you know, <laughs> but when they use the data to show that, you know what, last year we were weak in literacy, here's how it looks. It wakes you up. It gets your attention. And with Cognos, it's tightly integrated. We have 15 years of experience with them. The security between the systems is exactly the same. So when we talk about sharing reports, there's, there's no concerns. You're only going to see the students you need to see and it really allows you to customize the data. Um, it, I've been told, and I, I believe it as well, that it is the most powerful reporting tool in the market space. I mean, think about IBM. Who all watched Wimbledon last week? Right. Did anyone know that IBM's cloud powers all of the challenges that Serena Williams, you know, she challenges every <laughs> ball whether it's in or out. <laughs> IBM is powering that technology. Yeah. Right. So if they have a reporting tool, you know, darn well, it's one of the best in the world. And we provide that in the K-12 market space, market space. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that is awesome. We well, you know the, the key to all of that is, is that is, is workflow. You yeah. know, understanding workflow. That's that's been a big thing. I've started using that that terminology the last two or three years with my administrators. Is I'll start using the terminology workflow to help them better understand, OK, we're going to develop professional development. Let's talk about the workflow to getting to that point and then the workflow of that. And I, and I, I, I love where we're moving in, in the 21st century. You know, we're, we're getting smarter. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deviate because it makes me think of a growth mindset. And I know that's one of your favorite topics, maybe. And, you know, that's what it, to tell a, a great story about what we are. Um, when David and I started this, uh, we both had two separate bosses. Mine's with the school district and David's here at the educational cooperative. And um, they both embraced this and wanted to learn from it. And every guest that we've had on has wanted to learn from it. And we have wanted to learn in turn from that. It's not about being the smartest anymore. It's about learning that, okay, it's okay. I'm going to learn. There is a path to this. My, my mindset is through growth. It's not just being smart. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to me, that's a, a really big deal. And, and 
when we're talking about getting data in real time, that helps us find ways for these kids to grow every time. And that, that to me, it just it goes hand in hand. Big data and growth mindset. I mean, that growth is just the key. I, what what are your feelings on that? Let me know. Yeah. No, yeah, absolutely. You know, when you talk about when you talk about workflow, right? Who who likes to have the workflow defined? You know, I, I always I'm a soldier, right? I'm a, you know, you tell me what to do. I'm more comfortable in that environment versus hey, Justin. Uh, you know, I'll talk to you in a month. Uh, well, okay, I, what what do you want me to do for the next thirty days, right? I like that plan, and we're building that into our products now. So when we talk about that growth mindset, right? Right. You know, Carol Dweck has established and mm -hmm. states that if I believe in myself, that I can achieve, right? right? So we at SunGuard have really embraced that mentality, and we want to be thought leaders in the industry. So when we developed IEP Plus, which is our special education software, that actually has customizable workflow. So if you're familiar with the IEP world or whether it's an ARD world, if you're in Texas, right, when you're developing that individual education plan for your students, we allow you to customize the workflow to meet your specific district needs. So I may call it evaluation, um, you know, testing phase, and then the writing of the IEP. While you might call it something different, you can customize that workflow with IEP Plus. Mm -hmm. So that's a really nice feature. You know, just the other day, um, I was involved in conversations. We're rewriting enrollment online for our software right now. And we're really investigating merging the curriculum and assessment piece, which is Performance Plus, with eSchool Plus. Because how important, as we just mentioned, big data drives education today. So if we marry those two products and improve that integration, how much stronger is the product going to be? And in the past, I have not been a part of those conversations, mm -hmm. right? Because right. I'm just a solution guy. I give the demonstrations. Well, SunGuard's changed a lot. We're, we're, we want to be thought leaders and we're including solution specialists and other people within the community to get involved in the development of these products. So I really think you're going to see the workflow become a focus. You're going to see efficiencies are going to continue to be created because we're working together with all these different people to make sure these things happen effectively. Yeah. So you know, just like you said, Jeff, that workflow is crucial. And we've built it into IEP Plus. We've already had talks about where we could incorporate it into eSchool Plus, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's enrolling a student. The discussion I had the other day was lesson planning. We want to bring lesson planning into Teacher Access Center. So what does that look like? Do we want drag and drop functionality? Do we want to be able to miss a lesson one day, drag it to the next day, and the rest of them, you know, accommodate that on the backside, sliding all lessons back one entire school day? You know, these are things that, we are excited about. We want that workflow to be a part of our future because it makes people comfortable. Again, Jeff, you stated it perfectly. If I use it twice and I don't like it, I'm going to move on to someone else who can do it. Yeah. Yeah. So when yep. we bring out those new products, we need to make sure they're well thought out and that they provide seamless workflow that makes sense for our end users. Yeah. That, that, you know, in the growth mindset aspect of that, you know, if it, it, it's those little wins for the teacher, it's that little win. How many times have we been in a professional development workshop that we've taught where a teacher learns a basic thing? One of my first, way back in, this will date me, the late 90s was, you know, yeah, okay, you're pushing the icon across the desktop. Let me help you with that. All right. <laughs> you know, wow, you can right click it and learn to copy it. Okay, that's great. But it's those little wins that that's the whole idea. You don't have to be smart right out of the chute. You're mm -hmm. going to get better and you're going to achieve. Hence why we're seeing better test scores right. seeing this happen. And, and you're right. It, it's good to know that companies are embracing this. And you know why they're embracing it? It's not about money and it's not about selling more product. It's because they know it's the right thing. It's the right thing that's going to take, you know, us forward in the future and, you know, make humanity up much better as it moves on down the road. Absolutely. You know, and I can't speak enough about leadership at SunGuard and that mentality. You know, Adam Eberly, our CCO, uh, he says that, while we, we talk about sales deals and making decisions, if your heart tells you that it's the right thing to do, then do it. And odds are when we, you and I sit down later and talk about it, maybe it's a flop. Maybe it's a big, big, big success. If your heart drove you there, then you're making the right decisions, right? We got to try new things. We got to test the waters that haven't been tested. Right. But, you know, then we got to also follow suit on some of those who have done things well. Because it's never, you know, think about, you know, Facebook. Facebook wasn't the first social network. No, there right. were other networks out there. It's usually that third or fourth company to the line 
So we're trying to take those, you know, best in breed concepts and bring them into SunGuard's platform using the growth mindset, believing that if we make these things happen, you know, that bigger things can happen down the road. And it's a big part of what we're doing right now. Yeah. Well, you know, and SunGuard, like IBM, has a history of, you know, being a solid foundation. Yeah, that's just that's just what it is. And, you know, and, and sitting back and going, this is how we fix this. This is how we right. make this happen. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I, I hate to be the, the taskmaster here, but man, we have whipped through time like nobody's business. <laughs> this has been um, awesome. <laughs> Justin, tell us, uh, I'm going to give you the ele elevator pitch time. Give us a wrap up on your end of uh, what's going on with you guys. What's going on with you? What can we look forward to in this next school year that's starting in less than a month here? Great, great. So first, I want to thank you both for having me on. I actually, I can't believe what time it is already. I've had a lot of fun <laughs> and we've covered a lot of great topics. Um, you know, for me, you know, this year is, is a big year. I've really tried to get into the social network and be a part of uh, the social side of education. So I do have a blog for those of you that are out there. It's insightsineducation.info. So insights in education is one word, dot info. And, and I really use that platform to just share resources. You know, I, I don't always put my opinions out there because I know that a lot of you don't care what Justin McKean thinks, right? <laughs> but um <laughs> You know, I, I kind of use it as a platform to share articles that I think are, are great. And then I'll blog about a few of them. I got one coming out this weekend um, that's called uh, Professional Development Season. I joked about it earlier, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. For wedding crashers. And I put out there, you know, my five tips to making professional development successful. And it for me, I think it's prior to planning out your lesson. You need to be prepared before you set up your PD. And that's kind of how mine addresses it. A lot of those five tips are all about the actual event of professional development. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about being prepared for the professional development. So that's what's coming for me. Cool. And with SunGuard, you know, we got a lot of big things. We've got eSchool Plus 4.0, and we're mm -hmm. currently going to be rolling out 4.1 in the next uh, calendar school year. I talked about IEP Plus. That's our special education software. We have a brand new version called 5.0. It's HTML5. It's responsive design. It is the sexiest IP product that I've ever seen. <laughs> I know I'm a, a little, uh, you know, it's, it's on my side of the, of the game here, but I just love it. It's starting to go live in Texas later this school year as we start to build it out to other states. And, you know, with SunGuard, again, the idea is just growing in efficient ways that are going to help districts improve. We talk about student growth and achievement. You know, I think achievement is the wrong word to use because what's achievement for you, Jeff and David, is different than me. Yeah. What sure. if I am that C student that we talked about earlier? And if I become a C plus student, would we all agree I'm a better student? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. But is that achieving? I don't right. know. Right. You know, so I really think with SunGuard, we're going to take the platform to the next level with right. really pushing student growth. We want to continue to build and create efficiencies for districts. We want to make your life easier so that you can do your job and maybe have time to say hello to your neighbor without <laughs> duplicate entry, right? right? We want to really, really continue to boost parent and community involvement. As I stressed earlier, one point increase in GPA if parents in the community are involved. That is crazy. So it needs to be tapped into. And finally, continuing the push for a data-driven society. We look at different districts. I can go through a list of things I've written down here of districts that Talk about how we provide data in real time, consistent, and the most important piece is reliable. When you spit out that report, do you want to question whether it's right or wrong? No, you want to trust it. Right. And we really want to provide that feel function to all of our end users who are clients and those of you who are listening that may turn into being a prospect. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Awesome, man. We certainly appreciate you taking time out of your day and coming to uh, visit with us and uh, after you guys get some of the other stuff uh, rolled out, uh, I imagine we'll, uh, we we're, we're going to get show. you back yeah, on. Sure. I, I just, I, I want to say this has nothing to do with any of the conversation we had thus far, but if you happen to be baseball fans out there, um, I just want to say Justin to me looks a lot like Jim Tomey. I'm just going to throw that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've been told that before, yeah, but <laughs> That's <laughs> I used to get anyway. that on Buzz Lightyear 
Yeah, I can see oh, Buzz Lightyear. Yes. Which is hilarious, right? <laughs> my favorite, just because I'm a Pittsburgh guy, is you know, my family always tells me I look like Roethlisberger, which I wish oh, I could put uh, yeah, football there you in. go. Yeah. 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 I can see that um, too, yeah, but yeah. Gotten, there were a group of kids at my last district that called me Tommy. They, they didn't call me Mr. McKean. Yeah. They, yeah. They told me. They told me. It's like, yeah. Oh that's how you do. You look, you look, look just like him. I had to throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know that's going to drive the taskmaster crazy, but I had that's to, okay. I just, we I got plenty of time. Out. So, but cool, man. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, for coming on, and and like I said, we will definitely uh, be reaching out to you uh, as things uh, progress and in different products uh, start to roll out uh, yeah. from SunGuard. And, so. and if you ever get the chance to come to Arkansas, you got to drop by and see us. Oh, I, absolutely, gentlemen. I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. So again, thank you on behalf of SunGuard K12. And thank you on behalf of myself. I, I had an absolute blast. Awesome. Thank Thanks, you very man. much, man. We'll talk to you All later. Right. Yeah, take care, guys. <laughs> All right, you too. Hey, great. Great. I, you know what's funny? I, I like it when I learn stuff. Yeah. You know, and uh, you get educator talking about education, and you get someone in a company that believes in education. It makes mm-hmm. it just, it's funny. Our best interviews are just like this. Really? It's it's that time already. I, how did that happen? Right, you know, exactly. Just, it just flies on by. Well, and and you hit the nail on the head. The key is when we have you know we've got guests like Justin who were in education and have gone on to do something else, but part of that stays with them, and so that keeps them grounded and tied into the stuff that we do and the things that we talk about here on Edutech guys. Yeah. And I mean, it's just. It's great. Well, you know, it's crazy because it, it, it didn't just stay with him. It, it is who he is. It's yeah. part of his core. Yeah. Uh, hey, check out the website, Insights in Education. It's uh, Insight, I-N-S-I-G-H-T-S-I-N-E-D-U-C-A-T-I-O-N. I'm a good speller. That's all one word, <laughs> dot info. Uh, check it out. Some great stuff on there. Um, we posted it out on, on our tweet and everything. Catch him on Twitter at J-M-C-K-E-A-N-K-12. And uh, make sure you follow him because uh, we're going to hear a lot more from him. It's, it's not just going to be about SunGuard. It's going to be about education and, you know, the whole bit. Hey, we're going to drop out and catch a little music real quick while David and I shuffle some papers and get our last of the show put together. Stay tuned to The EduTech Guy. Hey, you're listening to EduTech Guys coming to you live from Hope, Arkansas, from the Southwest Arkansas Educational Cooperative. We'll be right back with some Google Tips of the Week and wrap this show up. Thanks for listening. EduTech Guys Radio.
uh, Nick Flora. Nobody gets out clean here on EduTech Guys Radio. Thank you very much for listening. Hey, listen, um, where are we going to be? Let me tell you a little bit about that. In October, uh, October 19th through the 21st, we're going to be at the Arkansas Conference of Technology up in Little Rock. And then uh, late November, early December, we'll be at the AESA Conference in Savannah, Georgia, providing live conference coverage there. And then in January, we'll be at the FETC Conference in Florida, Orlando. Uh, that'll be that's, that's going to be a great place to be in January. <laughs> so, oh man! We, so we're going to be providing live Big conference fat guy coverage. Like me in the heat. <laughs> My body's already gone into hibernation mode. And I'm just sweating like crazy. Remind me not to go to the <laughs> pool. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, great show today. Yeah, awesome, man. I've had a really good time. I also want to say we will probably be at Schools Without Walls. We just haven't confirmed that one yet. That's true. We just got to, yeah. The SWOW Conference. Hey, you know what time it is? It's time for... What time is it, David? Google App of the Week. He's getting so much better at that. We've been I mean, We've been paying for lessons. We've been picking up cans <laughs> on the highway. Just enough money to get him lessons. It's In the funny. couch. The person giving him lessons also actually lives on the highway. But it's a long story. Right. He owns the couch that wears comfy ass. Hey, it's time for Google Tip of the Week. And since I know the guy who sits right across from me found this Google Tip of the Week, I'm going to let him take it. Yeah, so this actually was released today, as a matter of fact. So you talk about hot off the press. I think this is one of the coolest things that uh, Google has come out with, and it is training for Google Apps. So if you are a Google Apps for education environment, if you are a Google Apps for business environment, uh, you can actually provide training to your users right within the uh, Google Apps environment. Um, there's a little bit that the admin has to do on the back end to push it out to your uh, Chrome and Chrome OS users, but um, they, it provides just inline training with things like how to set up an email signature, uh, how to recover deleted mail, setting expiration dates for shared documents, tons of other stuff that your users can do in Google Apps for Education that they're calling you about all the time as the admin. Now you'll be able to just say, oh, hey, there's, you know, there's training for that. Just click and learn there. Each one is just, you know, a few moments long and you're good to go. It's yeah. very cool. Just came out today. That's awesome. Hey, we'll be sharing out that Blogspot, Google, Google Apps Updates Blogspot post on the Twitter and on the uh, notes from the podcast. Yeah. So listen, it's been a great show. This has been phenomenal. It, it's just flown right by. I would I would have to say that of the shows that we have done, this one has some of the um, most I would say power haulage that oh, yeah. we could come out. Yeah. Just it's we are hauling. Yeah. Yes. This power is... haulage. That's what I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm throwing the gauntlet down. <laughs> I'm gonna look that up in the Myriad Webster real quick. See if that's out there. <laughs> hey, listen, it's been a great show. Uh... Um. Uh, Hope you're having a great summer. I know most of yeah. you are jumping back into PD. Good luck in that professional development. We hope your school district's on the right track, and you're on the right track. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, hey, I'm Jeff Madlock. I'm David Henderson. And uh, we'll see you on uh, the flip side. You've been listening to EduTech Guys Radio, radio.edutechguys.com. The opinions expressed on this site is programmed for those with participants and not intended to and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of any specific educational entity, sponsor, company, state, or government agency.